Mina, who is now blocking the light. Go, 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 go. Yeah, rub. I'm gonna try and talk a little bit, but I want to keep it fairly quiet because I do have people sleeping. A lot of night shift going on in this house. What you want to do is try to keep symmetry as close as possible. Um, you don't have to do a realistic butterfly. Um, in face painting I tend to do a lot of non-realistic ones. And uh, that's okay. As long as you get the general shape of the butterfly you want. And the reason I work in thin layers is so I can get the depth of color later.
little trick I learned from an artist named Jasmine Beckett Griffith. If you've seen the Big Eye Fairy Art, she's like the most famous one. Okay, cat. Oh, gotta have help, you know. And right now I'm just trying to lay down the shape as best as I can. So there's the general shape. I will come back to this and show you the next stage once this layer is dry. Lighter yellow. I did darker first because I wanted to kind of provide a base over top of the dark colors I had used previously when I started this canvas years ago. And I kind of like to do that and acrylics work really well with it because you can easily blend over top of other colors. And so that's what I decided to it just helps me give it a little bit more depth. By the way, my paint towel is about 30 years old. <clears throat> this is a little bit lighter yellow than the one I had used previously. And as you can see, by the reference, there's some lighter yellow on the butterfly. It's not this intense color. So I have to drop the color down. And I probably got a little too much water in the paint. But I can fix that. And you want to go with the shape of the butterfly wing to kind of, your paint is going to add texture. So what this is going to do is give your butterfly a little um, feeling of veins in the wing. see how this insect is starting to pop from the canvas. So it's just a matter of tracing back over what you had previously done with your darker color. In oils you would work from light to dark. I don't recommend oils for beginning painters or just painting hobbyists because they can be a bear to work with. Especially if you have limited space and have to keep a canvas sitting out for like two weeks before the paint dries. Rather inconvenient. And I'm going to be going over this spot, these areas later with black. But I like to at least be able to highlight where I have to go later. Because the sunlight is starting to fade. And that's going to limit my light and change the color of my light that I have available. I do have an aught bulb in that lamp, um, which works really well for giving you true colors. Uh, I do recommend an aught light with a magnification glass if you can afford it. And if you're going to continue working with crafts and hobbies, um, which a lot of witches do, um, it even helps when you're making your own tools because you can see what you're doing, which is a major help. But if you do any work with beads or anything else, you want to be able to see what you're doing. And Ott makes wonderful, wonderful lamps, and they're expensive, and I can't afford it. Okay, i got to let that dry, otherwise I'm going to have clumpy paint a lot more than I do. Okay, I'm back again. Um, I'm going to do another layer, lighten up the butterfly a little bit more. Um, later on, I'll have to be remixing the pale yellow again for some of the spots. But up until then, um, I'm still going to do another layer of the base coat here. And some of this areas on the, the swallow, zebra swallowtail are 
almost white through that pail. And so that's what I'm going to be hitting next. And again, following the direction that you know the veins on the butterfly will go. And trying to keep it that some areas fade into the darker areas. And that was the cat Mina back in the background making a meow. Um, it's really freaking cold outside. And we have a glassed in patio and she wants out. And we're not letting her out yet because that means the whole house is going to get cold and we pay a high enough electric bill anyway because it's insulated like a cardboard box. It's not ours. And we're going to be forced to move um, probably by the end of April, the latest. So um, hopefully we'll find something better. Okay. So as you can see, I layered the white in there. Um, and my white is probably a little bit more stark than on the original. Kind of hard to see. So my next thing is going to be to uh, start working on the blacks. And again later I'm going to have to layer white and yellow and blue over top of the blacks that I put in. <sighs> that ain't it. Here we go. Now this I can do at this stage. I'm not going to do any of the fine line work yet, I don't think. I should be in a needy Bombay over there. There's Sitlamina. She's our she's our foundling from the Humane Society. She is an American Bombay, and they're exceedingly vocal. If you're looking for a quiet cat, that is not the species or the breed to get. Well, sorry, I've been arguing with too many creationists lately. Species just pops out of my mouth now. Um, earlier before when I thought I wasn't going to talk during this video, the reason why I chose this brush is because it has a more rounded tip, which makes it a lot easier to do the freeform jagged feel that you want. Um, sometimes the square tip doesn't uh, exactly work out too well. Uh, and this butterfly's got a lot more of the bluish black, so I don't have to blend anything in. Um, sometimes to get a more of a brownish black, I'll blend in red, but I didn't really need to this time. Now, my zebra is not exactly realistic here, but it's going to convey the feeling. Plus, every butterfly, their patterns are different. Um, if you look up images of different type, species of butterfly on uh, Google, you'll see that even among the same species, their colors will variate uh, because each butterfly is an individual, of course, which is with us, too. And this is part of why they make a great totem. Okay, blend that in a little bit. Kind of match where the paint ran on the other side. Okay. I changed the timer on my tablet. Okay. So. Uh, I'm going to kind of go a little bit here and then I'm going to have to use the thinner brush to fill in a little more detail here. Because this is where I want to start having the shape really make sense. starting to round out this a little bit because I noticed that this butterfly um, some of the areas 
are a little bit more round where it goes into the sections of the wing. And he tends to stick out a little bit more, at least this particular butterfly sticks out a little bit more on his body than the monarch I painted in the last video. And if you make a mistake and you have paint smudge a little bit and stuff, it's no big whoop de do. Nice thing again about acrylics, even though oils you can blend, it's very hard to fix oils. Um, acrylics you can just kind of paint right back over it if you make a mistake. That's a very forgiving paint. Now this section here, I'm going to go with black later once I get the body defined. Time to switch brushes. I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go with a real tiny brush. I'm gonna go with medium size. Because I still have to block in a lot. And I will use the teeny teeny brush for real tiny detail. I'm gonna keep a little definition of the wing there. Also, um, at the end of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do these little bitty white flowers here because they're kind of cute and your butterfly needs some place to land. Leaves, you can kind of fake a leafy shape and throw things around or you can get detailed and look up different leaves like uh, for the monarch looking up milkweed and stuff like that and do that later. Um, but you can get some really good fantasy flowers that look real. Pardon? Too much Mountain Dew. Nothing like me burping in my video. But I can't turn back now because I have gotten this far already. Again, you kind of work on both sides at the same time. Because you want to keep it fairly well balanced. And you want to keep the feel again the direction of how the wing itself actually goes. If you notice I'm putting little extra lines in here to prepare. Give it kind of a fuzzy look. This technique unfortunately kind of uses up a lot of paint. And uh, yeah, I did pick up a lot of this from uh, watching Bob Ross when I was little. And my mom's an artist too. Uh, she was the first woman accepted in the Cowboy Artists Association of America. She turned them down because she didn't want to go riding around painting horses, other people's horses all the time. She wanted to do her own artwork and ride and stuff. And me, I want to be a full-time painter and jewelry maker and stuff. Um, but anyway, we would sit in the living room On PBS, Public Broadcasting, there would be Bob Ross, The Joy of Painting. And we would be kind of, <laughs> several times we'd be yelling at the TV because Bob would have this beautiful scene up, you know, that he did all freehand in the paint just like this. And then he'd have to put in this big black happy tree. <laughs> and we'd be yelling, no, Bob, no, Bob, not the happy trees. Or don't put that tree there, Bob, no, no. So we're constantly yelling at him. That's one of my good memories from childhood. Um, it was always kind of fun. Okay, this butterfly needs a head. And unlike the monarch over there where 
he was kind of landing. Um, this one, I'm going to add the antenna. Just like on the picture. I probably should go back and maybe add antenna to that other butterfly. I just might do that. But all you need is some nice... And it's me again, and it turns out my camera was quite full. <laughs> so, it stopped recording. And Mr. Butterfly reference on my tablet. The timer went on the tablet, too. Yay! How exciting. So, I'm still playing with black. I'm going to dry off the brush a little bit. I don't want too much water in the paint. Now I've got my butterfly's wings are a little bit more spread than what was in the picture. And he's got black all the way across. I'm not too particular about that extra highlight there. I think it gives a little bit more dimension. Um, sometimes I'll go right up to the line, but oops, well, that's not an oops. Here's how you fix oopses. He's got lots of stripes, so I'm going to turn said oops into a stripe. And if you notice from a lot of these swallowtail pictures, the color is a little fuzzy around the edges, and that's okay. Because again, that's the direction of the scales and the fibrous material on the wing. And again, mine's not going to be exactly the same. And no butterfly is. As long as you've got it where people can tell what it is, that's pretty much all you want to worry about. And in this spot, I'm actually going to lay in the larger section of the wing where the veins run through. Sorry, antique folding table here. Oh, I'm already pretty happy with this. This is coming out pretty cool. Sometimes I kind of really surprise myself with my own work. Because I spent a lot of my life being told that I had no talent. Um... Even when I was married, um, the person that I was with would laugh and tease me anytime I did stuff. And if I wasn't making money, he felt that it was a waste of time. So practicing was kind of out. I am actually about 10 years behind where I should be on my painting skill. those 10 years because I just kind of gave up and that's something if you have somebody who's 
causing you to be in a relationship like that. I'll see there, I had goofed up, but oh well. Um, if they're making you stop being who you are, that's not a good relationship. switch into the finer brush. So you can see that's a little itty bitty dinky tip. You can't even see it. That one's like a double bond. And it's pretty world. <laughs> I'm going to have to spend money on new brushes. So where is I? Probably could have made this spot bigger. I wasn't exactly thinking. I have the veins kind of caught traveling a longer distance. Not exactly right on my part, but hey. This is where you want the real tiny brush. Because you are doing really tiny work. Again, try to keep it even on the next side as much as you can. Even if you do a fantasy butterfly that's not realistic, you still want to try and keep the symmetry going as much as possible. Because that's one of the traits that you will see with the butterfly. Oops. Well, that was just color anyway. Shadowing there. Okay. The lines are very faint on the underwing. Notice there's four segments. Do, 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 trying to think of what I'm doing. Okay. I'm actually ready to go back. And take some of the yellow and the white mix. So excuse me a moment. Okay. I also threw a little bit of orange on my palette because there is some orange sections. But I'm still going to mix that with first black and darken it up. This is a specific color I'm trying to get and it's more brown. Very warm color. Pull some white. A little more orange. I almost have mud. I don't want to get to the point of mud. Awesome.
Will that work for one spot? Two spots. Okay. Rinse. There's many times I have dipped my brush into the wrong container and then accidentally uh, picked up the Mountain Dew can and drank out of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this time I'm going with that exceedingly pale yellow. These spots are white, but there's yellow in the spots. So you want to get mostly white. And again, go in and you're just kind of filling in the gaps. I'm sorry. I screwed up there, but I don't care. Again, no big whoop de do. Just start laying in lines. Go back. Your first side is not going to be a big deal. Your second side, you want to keep count. somewhat count. You're human and unless you're sitting here doing a precisely technical drawing, you know what? Don't cry over spilled milk, honestly. Alrighty. I'm going to go back and grab some of that gray orange I just mixed because there are veins on the bottom par portions of the wings, but you want those to be a little more pale. And I notice I got one wing bigger than the other. Again, I say my butterfly is moving. <clears throat> so I'm not going to fuss over it too bad. Okay, I really don't have to change the brush. Go back and lift up that yellow. That's that pale yellow I got. And do the fuzzies on the butterfly. You can see where the abdomen divides. Kind of highlight the eyes a little bit. Again, not wholly accurate, but tough. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the black. Dry it off, I don't want it too wet. edge defined of the body. There you go. Okay. Now, I have two shades of blue. This is my last step on this butterfly, actually. Uh, the blue I've got here is neon, which is one of my favorites. I just want a drop. I tend to burn through a lot of paint, unfortunately. On my more um, expensive canvases, I will um, use full bore acrylic paint. You know, the artist's professional. This one I've done a mix of craft paint and professional paint, um, just because 
um, that's what I have on hand. I'm going to be glazing over this entire canvas with a waterproof and heat proof glaze um, just because this canvas tends to be outside and it's been rain and stuff like that. So all I'm doing here is there's some areas I'm laying the lighter color down first this time. This time you don't need to have it be that intense because this is going to blend right in. Okay, that moves a bit really. It's just amazing what evolution has done to create such a brilliant, brilliant, beautiful creature. If you think about how the butterfly came about with all their colors and everything through natural selection and they separated out and it just, we live on a freaking amazing planet. This was just a little darker shade of blue. Now for the intense one. Just layering it and kind of blending it in. That cooing noise in the background are my guinea pigs. There's Harley Quinn and Snowball, both adopted. The cooing is actually dominance talk. There. There you go, guys. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it's freehand. No drawing ahead of time. I think I might highlight a little bit of blue down here just for fun of it. No other reason. So there you go. That's the end of it. So blessed be everybody.